Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial for another episode of uh, here at the 2021 G1 Symposium in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I'm here with uh, Dave Sterling with Royce Geo. That's right. Tell me a little bit who you are and uh, let's dive right into with uh, Royce Geo. Sure. Uh, we are a six-year-old company supporting uh, the defense and intelligence community and all things, as the name implies, geospatial. Um, we uh, just hit our six, uh, sixth birthday, uh, roughly around 80 employees with uh, about 30 some odd employees here in the St. Louis area, the other 50 or so in DC and other far reaches of the world, either on a ship or, uh, or in uh, a foreign theater supporting the military. Um, our main strengths, if you were to put it in two buckets, uh, one is in advanced analytics, and that's supporting everything from data automation to advanced um, orchestrated collection, both uh, supporting our uh, primary customers and also now transitioning to a pure commercial play, working with commercial providers and collectors to support mainly government mission, but really making it a, a solely unclassified, if you will, uh, um, play. And then the other side being in enterprise IT, primarily in unified communications, audiovisual engineering and design and integration. So think about collaboration. How are we getting people in 50 different locations across the globe on the same video teleconference or the same WebEx meeting or in constant comms with Jabber. So we're managing all those kinds of applications today for different uh, customers throughout the community. And then also with software application deployment, development services as well. Um, you know, 50 different unique desktops supporting 50,000 users. How do you get those builds, those unique software builds out to different users? So, how did you get involved with this? So, I uh, came up the ranks through through NGA, two two degrees in, in GIS and geography, and uh, the the next logical move was was go into something like NGA. Got the opportunity to do that pretty early on, um, both on the government side and commercial. And then from there, um, after spending a solid 11 years, figured it was time to plant my flag and, and go out on my own. So back in 2015, uh, had the opportunity of working with a lot of former CEOs of the company I was in. We were acquiring small companies like our size. So I got really the, the playbook, the cookbook on what went right and what went wrong for them. So I spent about a year or two just kind of putting together the, the business plan, if you will, on what we wanted to be and what we didn't want to be. And uh, so I had a really good idea and was able to hit the ground running pretty fast. So we've, uh, we've seen some pretty explosive growth over the last couple of years and just won our first two prime contracts uh, last month well, or two months ago in August. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so diving into a little bit more detail what you all provide mm -hmm. your customers, you mentioned a lot of different things. Can sure. you dive into more the specialties of, of uh, what you have? Yeah, so the I would say our, 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 our claim, if you will, we, we've built this portfolio of programs that are looking at both data analytics and how doing good old fashioned analysis, if you will, how are we automating that? And then also, how are we taking that automation to drive better collection? So not collecting for the sake of collecting, but collecting what really needs focus and attention and doing that with high speed, uh, high accuracy, and high reliance on that if a tip or a certain event happens in the world, we know that we're getting very good collection in near time against that. Um, we've been doing that for now for almost five years. Um, and now we've built a capability both supporting our partner in their mission space and then also in the commercial side on bridging those two worlds together to where we're able to talk to both sources interchangeably at the same time, and now we're doing that across multiple programs. And, and what kind of data are you talking about here? Is, is it a mixture of just imagery or everything, or SIGINT, or is it yeah, I mean, so like it's, commercial RF, for example, that's a big thing right, right now. You know, what, what, kind of, what kind of data do you Mix and sure, um, all the above. Really, at the end of the day, our guys look at it, and you know they tell it all the time. Data is data. You know it, they're able to consume it, whether in the raw and structured form or through a machine-driven API. We ingest that into a modeling and analytics platform that's able to, through parallel processing and through uh, model orchestration, bring in SIGINT, bring in RF, bring in GeoInt, uh, bring in active uh, tips, if you will, from out you know, a bevy of collectors and able to fuse that to show a complete story. The story that never really gets told or written that um, our, our folks spend a lot of time on is the data engineering and conditioning side, getting to that point where you can do really good analysis. Everybody thinks, oh, let's bring in the data science and just have them do analysis. Well, there's a whole tale, you know, that, that ha has to happen in terms of how to condition data to be able to do really good analysis. So there's a lot of time and focus spent on that as well. I think the data conditioning <laughs> is probably the, the, the part that people don't anticipate the most, right. especially when it comes to things like prepping for machine learning. Yep. 
Yep. And uh, getting the training data prepared, Absolutely. and getting the uh, you know how how do you how do you integrate that in the workflow? Uh, because at the end of the day, perhaps. Uh, your customer's platforms has right. to ingest the data in a certain format too, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, so how do you over, what would you say the biggest challenges you have been to, uh, to, to overcome integrating your software and services with the government? Or what would you say, what would be the, uh, the, the we'll call it the success stories mm -hmm. that you've had uh, doing what you do? Yeah, so the focus always being mission. Um, you don't want to introduce or come with a, a technology or a piece of proprietary software that really doesn't play well or play nice inside the mission space. At the end of the day, we, um, you know, we, we do a really good job of using the tools and the constraints that are you know, given to us in terms of, hey, um, we don't, we're not asking you government to buy some $500,000 purpose built something or another that really only has one use. We're, we're using a combination of GOTS, COTS, and really showing them how to get the most value out of the, the institutional investments they've made. And I'd say that's something that has separated us in terms of our capability and ability just because we've, we've been really good at that in the last four years. And a big spin off of that as well, you know, the model based analytics side using a lot of GOTS um, software to do that, um, we've spun a whole training uh, line of business out of that as well. So we were in a mission space doing some advanced intel, bringing in collection in a very uh, resource constrained environment. Uh, got the notoriety of some senior officials, came back and they said, okay, congratulations, you're now going to build a training course and teach all of NGA how to do advanced model-based analytics. And now we do that. So uh, out of our experience in theater, we, we were able to bring that home and essentially build a whole separate line of business out of that. And Great. so training, I should have mentioned, falling within our Intel portfolio is a significant part of what we do as well. So the GeoInt, this is the first year GeoInt's been in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you think of the symposium so far? As right. it's been two years since we've had a physical symposium. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean for you, especially since you don't have a booth here? Yeah, um, we as a small company, you know, we're we're still, um, you know, we we like to get out and be amongst the people and not be necessarily anchored to a booth. And as a small company, there's a lot of in, you know investment in making sure that you're putting the dollars behind that. We we. We spend our time, you know, taking meetings, and, and to us, it's we like having that freedom and flexibility. This is my 14th GeoInt, so I've been doing this a long time. Um, missing last year was definitely weird, having been to so many in a row. Uh, this year, the conference is great, great facility. Uh, I know with all the um, with Moonshot being, you know, being launched, there's a lot of energy around that, um, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to see, you know, what's sort of next. We, that's, to us, it's always, we get out of this conference, it's not only the partnerships, the collaboration, figuring out, you know, what business milestones we're going to go at with, with new vendors, partners, technology, it's, all right, what are, what are we hearing from mission customers and what are they, you know, leaking out that we can really start hanging on to? So what do you think about the city in general? You know, oh, in terms states, of geospatial yeah. in St. Louis, they're trying to build this as the yep. new uh, hub of the West for right. geospatial. I could say the hub of the West, but honestly, it could potentially turn into the hub of geospatial, right? They've got enough energy and I think support and, and attention behind this where it most certainly could. Um, and uh, you, you know, back in when we were st studying GIS growing up and, and you know, you had certain centers and, and usually it's anchored around academia. Um, here it's a mix of great academia, corporate investment and government all coming together. And I know there's been a lot of leadership both from all three sides that are all working in tandem. And I think that, you know, they've got all the right parts and pieces and players. And yeah, th this is definitely here to stay. Now you're based out of Northern Virginia. We are. Uh, do you have a presence here in St. Louis? We do, we've got about 30 employees here and uh, we'll be launching an office here probably in early 22. Awesome. Yeah, downtown. No, so, so everybody's gonna get a presence here, which is great. That's right. Uh, no, awesome. So what message do you have that uh, perhaps we didn't cover to, to folks that you want to know about uh, who you want? Sorry, let me start over on that. What message do you want to send to folks who don't know anything about Royce Geo? Uh, little company with big capabilities. Um, we are uh, we're a blue collar company in a kind of in a tech world. 
if you will. Uh, the name Royce is my brother, dad, and great-grandfather's first name. So, who were cops and commercial fishermen and farmers, so they, you know, they've worked harder than I ever have, in, you know, in, in my eyes. So if I'm gonna, you know, put a company, you know, give a name to a company, I want to honor them. So, um, and we bring that, that mentality to, you know, the mission today. A lot of the goals in St. Louis and a lot of the goals in the uh, geospatial industry as a whole in the recent year or two has been trying to instill in young professionals mm -hmm. and young college students or young mil uh, military just getting out trying to figure out what the industry right. is uh, 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 trying to trying to help them figure out what's next for them what the industry looks like yep. what message would you have to send them uh, to inspire them to get involved with the industry you know you rewind the clock 20 years ago and, and to really tap in this space there was a, a, a whole series of events you would have to follow to you know get the clearance to get the access to get in that whole paradigm is shifted um, today um, I think both commercial and the government are looking at you know who's coming out with, say, a foundational understanding of, of geography, GIS, but brings a coding background. It's bringing these, these multi-tenant skills, faceted skills, and then at the same time, there's so much of the mission that is going to a pure commercial, unclassified environment, that's becoming the new uh, battlefield. So to me, uh, you know, I think the, the barriers to entry are much lower to get really into the mission that, you know, that. Uh, within say NGA for example before it was very clearance driven now not so much I think really having a good understanding of data all the data engineering conditioning side really having a, a, an appreciation for that and um, I, if you're bringing that to the to the game bringing that to, you know, as a strong bullet point on your resume I think you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of companies wanting to talk to you so if anyone wants to get a hold of you or Royce mm -hmm. Geo, what's the best way to do that? Uh, yeah, go to our website, RoyceGeo.com. Uh, we've got news on the company, uh, job openings, we're hiring. We've got about probably a dozen or so funded positions today. Some are cleared, some are uncleared. Um, and uh, myself, I'm always open line, Dave at RoyceGeo.com. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Dave, for joining us. Pleasure, Alan. And uh, nice seeing you here at the conference. Absolutely. Uh, just for everybody's information, Dave appeared last year on a geospatial frontier uh, event, which was uh, completely virtual after COVID started. So That's right. uh, it's great to see faces that I've never met in person that were completely virtual at the time. So <laughs> once again, thanks everybody. Thank you, Dave, for joining yep. us. And we'll catch everybody next time. Thank you.